everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our new series. Actually, new series na to. Um, we started off actually the year um, with godly governance and Christian leadership. And then we had another series with business, finance, and prosperity. And now this is going to be our third series for the year with a very interesting topic, the supernatural power of God. You know, and um, I think this is one of the most misunderstood things in the scripture or among Christians or among the body of Christ in churches. Parang dito lagi may contention. Dito lagi may, you know, may di pagkakaunawaan or maybe, you know, uh, to some extent, some people even go to uh, divisions and, and church splits because of, you know, different stands on the supernatural power of God. It's a very... Um, divisive topic, but at the same time, we should not fear difficult topics. Diba? You know what your problem? When you start fearing difficult topics, you stop preaching the truth. You know? When you fear difficult topics, you start compromising. Ah, ito kasi mahirap to. Ah, ito kasi mahirap yung ganyan. So, diba? Wag na natin pag-usapan. If you start doing that, then you breed an ignorant brand of Christians. Yun ang delikado. When you start avoiding Challenging topics, bakit? Kasi hindi naman talaga clear, maraming uh, area na hindi na supported by scripture. Like, I get it that we should be careful, but to ignore it and pretend that let's just not talk about it, that's foolish. That's equally as bad as abusing uh, whatever's there. Diba? So, yung akin lang, again, brothers and sisters, the commitment of the ministry is to stick to scripture. It's always to go back to the word of God. It's easy to argue about opinions, about uh, what he said, she said, itong sabi ng pastor ko, yun sabi ng pastor niya, whatever. It doesn't matter. Bible school says this. Our denomination says this. I do not care. What I do care about is scripture. And um, scripture is the truth. You know, uh, it's God-breathed. It's good for reproof, for correction, for equipping, for every good work. By uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. So anyway, the point to is that for today, or this series is going to be fun because I will be talking about a lot of stuff. I, there will be, a, uh, there will be a, a part of this that I will be talking about a lot of personal experiences and a lot of practical wisdom about applying the supernatural power of God. Okay? So definitely it's part of it, but at the same time, we need to build a strong foundation. So it's na tayo sa foundations. And when I say foundational, it's never boring. You know, pag feeling mo alam na yung foundation, parang delikado, baka overconfident ka. You know, um, even if you do know the foundation, a true, genuine foundation, it's always good to renew your mind and just refresh your mind on those, you know, on that revelation, on the truth in Scripture, because this is super important. Okay, the supernatural power of God, we know that God is supernatural. The whole point of the concept of God is supernatural. So, hindi pwedeng, hindi pwedeng I worship God, pero ayaw mo na supernatural. You can't, because God is supernatural. Diba? God himself is supernatural. So, hindi pwedeng separate yung pagiging supernatural kay God. Because it's one and the same. It's part of who he is. If he wasn't supernatural, then he wouldn't be God. And he wouldn't be deserving of worship if he wasn't supernatural. Yet, the thing is, Christianity is supposed to be faith in the God who is supernatural, yet the body of Christ, unfortunately, is not representing that supernatural. It's been reduced to just religion. It's been reduced to just studying about principles and behavior modification and self-help. Do this. Be good. Act good. You know, I was going to church for many years. What my take home after nearly every service was, oh, I feel terrible because I need to take my faith seriously. I need to be good and I need to share the gospel with people. That was, I know many of you can relate. That every time you'd come home after a service, shucks, oo nga, kailangan magbago na ako. Kailangan ko na seryosohin, magvo-volunteer na ako. But why is that? Why is that? It's... It, that kind of faith, that kind of that brand of Christianity is about you. It's not about Jesus. It's so human-centered that it's dangerous. Because it's not supposed to be. Christianity is supposed to be about Christ. Everything about Christianity is supposed to be supernatural. 
Who, who dies on a cross and resurrects on the third day? <laughs> that itself is supernatural. That itself is something that must be understood in, in, in a different way, not logically, but through faith. So yun ang isang kailangan natin makita. Why is the supernatural detached from you know, the, the faith, the Christian faith? So we want to demystify all these things. You mga iba now, this is just an intro, okay? But, you know, for some Christians, they're so afraid of the supernatural. Why? Because you can't control it. You can't understand everything with rules and parameters and steps and do this and do that. And that's the whole point of faith. If everything was about the law, then you wouldn't need faith. If everything was just about blind obedience, follow this, go to church, do this, do good work, do, 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 voila. You wouldn't need faith. You know, the Lord said, be holy for I am holy. He said, be, not do. He said, don't, he didn't say, he didn't say, do holy things for I am holy. He didn't say, act holy for I am holy. No, he said, be holy for I am holy. Being is an identity. So this, everything about the supernatural power of God is part of our identity. Our whole faith. It's all supernatural. It's part of our identity. So we have to understand the proper context. You know? and, and again, uh, by no means am I claiming that I have the monopoly of truth. Okay? Hindi po ako perfect, you know, but the Word of God is perfect. Hindi pwede. Hindi pwede perfect ang tao. Si Jesus lang talaga yung perfect yan. And si Holy Spirit yung mag reveal ng truth. So we need to see this in the light of Scripture. Okay, so topic for today is very, very simple, um, very simple topic. Uh, at first, again, this is the first part. I don't know how many parts I'm going to do with this. You know, I'm still praying about it, but I already have a good outline of what the Lord wants to show. But today, I want to talk about activation and impartation, the power of the Holy Spirit, okay, the power of God. So we have a lot of these teachings already floating around. If you guys were here last Saturday, so those watching this in the recording form, you know, um, uh, I may not necessarily follow in the playlist because this is going to be a different playlist, but, you know, last Saturday, in our Saturday service here, I was teaching, um, the t- t- title of the message was By My Spirit, and I thought about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it's kind of related to what we're teaching today. Maraming mga intersects sa mga verses, right? But um, if you understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then you would know that it activates what God has deposited inside you. And I explained that those in the book of Acts who were baptized in the Holy Spirit, they already had the Holy Spirit prior to that. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is a separate experience from salvation. It's a separate experience from water baptism. It's totally separate. Again and again and again in Scripture, you will see it is separate. That people who were already baptized, already believing in Jesus had not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when they did get baptized in the Holy Spirit, gifts activated. Power flowed. They started prophesying. They started uh, speaking in tongues. And and revival broke out. That's the whole point. So may may, may power activation. So if you're a Christian, just, just again, foundational stuff. If you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're saved. You are sealed with the Spirit of promise, Ephesians 1.13. You're going to heaven. That's awesome. You know, in John 4, I used the reference verse last time. In John 4, that when you are saved, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the wellspring of life inside you, and you will never thirst again. So it's a book of John, you know, when Jesus talked to the Samaritan woman, you know, um, he, she, she's, uh, he said, whoever drinks of this water will never thirst again. It will come up in you like a wellspring of life. So when you are saved, you have that wellspring of life. You have a well. But in John 7, Jesus makes another reference saying that, you know, when you receive the Holy Spirit, rivers of living water will flow out of the, your heart, the core of your being. Rivers will flow. So why yung isa well, yung isa river? Those are two completely different bodies of water. So then I realized that, you know, John 4, he was talking about your salvation. That when you... Are, are when you receive the Holy Spirit, you have a well of life, well of water inside, eternal life. You will never thirst again. And you're, you're, you're okay na. That's for you. 
But when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, that well turns into a river. And that river flows. And wherever the river flows, life follows. So salvation is for you. The well is for you. The river, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's for you to be a blessing to everyone around you. Amen? So that's, you know, that's, that's the foundation of what I want to share here tonight. When I talk about activation and impartation, we all know I'm assuming that you have an understanding of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I, I am assuming that you have an understanding somewhat of spiritual gifts, although I think maybe part two or part three, I'm going to go through all the gifts and practical applications of it and, and how it's used in ministry. It's by no means comprehensive, but at least I'll share whatever um, I have learned throughout the past years of ministering. Right? So, but for now, I want to talk about activation and impartation of the power of God. And the very basis of that, let's go to Acts 1, chapter 8. There we go. It says in the New King James Version, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So what, what happened here was that Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he said, again, these disciples already had the Holy Spirit. Okay? In John 20, you would see that, that he breathed on them. They said, receive my spirit, and they did. They believed in Jesus. Jesus resurrected. They were saved. So they had the Holy Spirit in them. So now Jesus is talking about a separate experience that here in Acts 1, he said in verses prior to this, he said, tarry in Jerusalem. I'm going to give you something. You wait in Jerusalem. Wait for the promise of the Father. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. So why would Jesus tell them to wait if it wasn't important? Bakit hindi Jesus sign sa oras, go, go, go. These people need to hear the gospel. Di ko na kailangan yan. Bakit ka na, di ba? ba? Ba, di na sila nag-argue ng gano'n? Kasi uh, a lot of churches think like that right now. They don't care about equipping. Basta makabigil lang sila ng track. Go, 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 go. Sige, basahin nyo to. Pasok yung heaven. You know what I mean? And I, I'm not exactly against tracts, pero yung akin lang, what are you sharing? Like, what are you, what are you giving? Ano Jesus yung binibigay mo? You cannot give what you don't have. Do you know who Jesus is? It's not just, okay, recite something and then that's it. You know, if you are intentional about evangelizing, you lead them to Christ. I have a separate teaching on that. I don't want to get too much into that right now. I'm not against giving out gospel tracts. I have used gospel tracts many times, you know, and it's, it's good as long as, the worst word, as long as the word of God is preached, I rejoice, Philippians 1.18. So I agree with that. But as disciples... We have to understand under whose discipline we are. So, paano ka magiging disciple kung di mo kilala si Jesus? So, anong binibigay mo? Anong Christ yung binibigay natin? Di ba? So, anyway, point lang is here, before he sent out the disciples to witness to all the earth. Witness about what? Witness about him. Witness about God. Witness about Jesus and grace and the power of God. What did he do? He said, you will receive power. Wait in Jerusalem. I will give you power when the Holy Spirit come, comes upon you. When you receive that power, when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, that power will activate. And then you shall become witnesses after you have power. So for you to witness, you should be witnessing in power. There's no... There's a, there's a promise of power for a reason. It's very hard and very difficult to witness without power. And I said this last Saturday. If you start witnessing without power, that's a false witness. All you're carrying is religion. All you're carrying is an argument. Oh, believe our God. Yeah. So the battle of religions. Oh, but my God is like this. So my God is like that. God doesn't have to join that contest. You don't even have to argue about God. You, you don't. You don't argue about God. You don't convince people about God. Because faith is not just about being convinced. Faith is believing in spite of. Kaya nga faith eh. If all you have is an argument, then that's not faith. Christianity is not an argument. Because right? all, if all you have is an argument and mental assent, then people can argue you out of it. If someone with a better argument comes along your way, ah, wala, na, sira na yung faith mo. But if what you have is an encounter with God, I don't care what argument you have. I saw this guy raised from the dead. 
I don't care what argument you have. I saw Jesus change this life. I don't care what argument you have. Diba? Yun yun eh, pag meron kang sariling encounter kay God. No one can steal that from you. Because that's your own personal encounter. Diba? So as you have that. So, you know, that's the purpose of power. To show the world and to witness to people that this is the one true God. Why? Because He has the He has power. The almighty, genuine power that none can compare. Only God has that. It's reserved for Him. That's what we're supposed to witness. You know, faith is supernatural. Faith is supposed to transcend logic. You know, but at the same time, we have to be careful not to overshoot. Because again, I know this is a very sensitive topic. I know it's a very sensitive topic. Because some people have abused the power. You know, that they do all these things. You see... Um, um, all these um, popular preachers and teachers of the previous century and madami dun mga false prophet that they use powers and fake miracles to steal money from people and oh, padala mong pera and there have been so many people who went to jail their ministries got exposed their churches got exposed and madami palang evil behind the scenes and all that and then you know there was a backlash from other conservative Christians seeing see that power is fake. So just because there are people that abused it doesn't mean it's all fake. So there are two extremes where Christians overshoot because of this power, supernatural power. One is that they get drunk on power. Lahat na lang power. Lahat na lang Lahat na lang Every dream na lang, oh, grabe, anong oras na? 6.57. means ganito, verse 57, ang ganito. Magkano yung sukli mo? Seven pesos. Seven, seven is the number of complete. Seven is the number of... That's, it's funny. We're laughing about it. But really, there are people stuck like that. It's foolish. Walang ganun sa Bible. So there's an overshoot that everything that happens has to be spiritual. And there's another overshoot on this side that they dismiss everything. that there, Because there's an abuse, lahat yan mali. I don't want to touch that. So there's a side of Christianity that's, that has a fear of understanding the supernatural, and there's a side of Christianity that is just obsessed with the supernatural that they become superstitious. So that's both equally dangerous. Either you ignore it or you overshoot it. Satan will push people to either side. So we have to be careful not to overshoot. That's why I cannot reinforce enough the you know the importance of having your own revelation through Scripture, right? You know, no matter what you say or do. I will agree, and as scripture says, that the gospel is supposed to be powerful. The gospel is indeed supernatural, right? So Romans 1.16, no argument there. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And the word salvation here, in the, the soteria, soterion here, talks about the noun, that what you possess in Christ and it's not just going to heaven. It's being made whole. It's being healed, delivered, prospered, protected. Everything favored. It's in that word. So that's supernatural. Absolutely. Right? And along with it, there are things that accompany salvation. Kasama din yun. The gospel is supposed to be powerful. So right here with this one verse, it's really stupid to believe in cessationism. It's foolish. Some of you may not know what cessationism means. Okay? There are entire churches and denominations out there that believe the power of God has ceased. Tapos na. Wala na. The last miracle, the last power of God died with the last apostle. And there's no healing today. There's no deliverance today. There's nothing today. All you got to do is just wait to die and go to heaven. And that's it. That's the teaching of cessationism. It is actually antichrist. Because the gospel itself is the power of God. The power of God does not turn off. The power of God did not cease. The power of God, hindi nalulubat, okay? Hindi po, ano yun? The gospel is the power of God. And the gospel is here with us today, and the power of God is absolutely flowing today. And salvation in itself is already supernatural, containing healing, deliverance, prosperity, everything that you will need in this lifetime and forever. So the gospel itself is supernatural. Cessationism is foolish. Absolutely. Nag-worship ka pa kay God, maging atheist ka na lang kung ganun. Might as well. 
kung, kung cessationist ka, proud cessationist, maging atheist ka na lang, pareho lang. Diba? Why would you believe in a God? Why would he even deserve to be a God if he had no power? I think it's terrible to even worship a God who can do something about it but won't. That makes him a tyrant. That's not love. That's evil. So clearly, they're preaching a different God. And that's not, that's not what the Bible stands for. The Bible talks about Jesus, you know, who never turned anyone away. Diba? So at the same time, so I mean, okay, now we got to think, if the gospel is the power of God, where is that power? Have we experienced it? Are we seeing it? I know many of you here have, but those watching, maybe your first time watching this, in your years in the church or in the ministry, where is the power? Is the power just going through the rounds every week? Numbers, how many people attended? Magkano yung ganito? Ito yung ganyan? Ito yung activities? How many salvations? How many prayers? Is that all there is, the church? Where's the power? Where's the power of the gospel? Why is it that only a handful of people or a handful of churches and ministries have experienced God's power when His grace has appeared to all? You know, hindi ko gets. The grace of God has appeared to all men bringing salvation. Titus 2.11. The grace of God has appeared to all, and the grace of God is supernatural. Why is it that only a handful of people have experienced the supernatural power of God, the supernatural grace of God? I don't get it. The church has to wake up. What? Paul, who wrote, who through the, of course, through the Holy Spirit, uh, used Paul, but Paul wrote a big chunk of the New Testament. And look what he says about it in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 4 and 5. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Guys, this verse is staring us in the face. Yet where is it? Where is it? Why is it that so many people, before they believe anything, I'm going to check my, my pastor. But my pastor said this. My pastor said that. So don't get me wrong. You know, we, we are subject to authorities. We honor the authorities. But by no means is your pastor the Holy Spirit. Right? So there is a higher authority than your pastor, and that is the Word of God. So your pastor should be bringing you to the Word of God. Your pastor should be leading you to have your own relationship with the Holy Spirit. Your pastor is not your Holy Spirit. So I... I, I I, I, I mentor people, I pastor people, but by all means, I can suggest, but I can't give you truth from me. I will lead you to the word. You find it in the word yourself. I believe that is what every teacher or pastor should do. But when you have your own hearing from the word of God, then you will see it for yourself. So at the same time, now, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to persuade anyone. Christianity is not an argument. Paul didn't sit around trying to reason out just with people and argue. When he tried to do that, his ministry did not become fruitful. It was through the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Because how can you argue with someone who's heavily indoctrinated? You can't. You won't win. They've been brainwashed to believe all that stuff for years. It's not an argument will not... Right? But when they see God's power in front of them, when they see a miracle in front of them, I remember um, in the book of Acts, it's not here, but when Peter faced uh, the Sanhedrin and all the religious leaders, they're like, we can't deny that there were miracles that took place at the hands of these men. You know, they can argue what they want, but, you know, um, we can't argue with that because... You know, in fact, there were miracles that took place. The blind man saw, the lame man walked. And I mean, testimony about what was happening. People who, you know, Peter's shadow fell upon people and they got healed, they got delivered. So we can't argue with that. But I hope But just don't preach in the name of that Jesus. I hope But they couldn't argue. They had nothing to present against what Peter and the disciples did because it was the power of God. So how can you argue with the power of God? You can't. You can't argue with it. You can reject it. Not everyone who encounters power will accept. Okay? That's a strong statement. And I, I, 
Kasi ito yun eh, ito yung foolishness eh. You know, there are some denominations that focus so much on the power and the supernatural, feeling nila that when you walk in that power and the supernatural, everyone has no choice but to be saved and to believe and be in awe. No, of course not. Because the Sanhedrin themselves saw all these miracles. They, the Sanhedrin, when they saw Lazarus, who was confirmed dead, and he was dead for several days, way past the prescription period for uh, the superstitions during that time, ilang araw ng patay, and he was raised from the dead, what's the first thing they did? Patayin natin. Diba? Oh, Lazarus was raised from the dead. What did they think? Let's kill him. How evil is your heart to see a miracle like that? And the first thing you think of is, let's kill him. That's evil. That's demonic. See? So just because you display power, it doesn't automatically mean that, oh, okay, man. Yan na yung pinnacle of all that. It does not guarantee salvation for people. It's not. Because if it was all about the power, then everyone would be saved. You know, remember the, uh, the, the Israel in Egypt, the 10 plagues, all those things. Ano nang yara sa Egypt? They didn't, did they repent? No, they didn't. The Israelites were so stiff necked. They saw a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire, and they saw the presence of God. You know, and they saw the tablets written by the finger of God himself. They saw all these signs and wonders, you know, the, the water that rushed out of that, the quail that came, all these things. And they still chose to honor idols. They chose to worship idols. They were still stiff-necked. So just because power is there, it doesn't guarantee that people will automatically repent. So it's a tool, absolutely. You have to balance this. It's a tool, it's absolutely useful. I, you should be operating in power, but do not, do not be foolish and think that just because you have power, automatic na lahat yan. You know, Paul himself was in walking in the demonstration of spirit and of power, but that, that did not guarantee that everyone he encountered got saved, right? Choice pa rin ang tao yan. But to those who believe, when you display the supernatural power of God, that leads people to have faith, not in your wisdom, not in your ability, not in your, uh, your prowess of command or the English language or whatever language you speak or preach with. It's not there, but it's in the power of God. You know, when, when, when you start ministering to people, when you start praying for people, hindi yung grabe, galing mo magpray, hindi yun eh. That's a wrong feedback. When you pray and minister to people, people should be like, wow, praise God. Wow, Jesus is so awesome. Hindi yung grabe, ang galing mag-pray nun. Kita mo yung ganun, haba nung prayer nyo. You're looking at the wrong thing. Kita mo yung ganyan, tapos biglang nagtang sumiga. Wow, galing talaga. You know what? No. You know, that's not. It should not be exalting the person. It should be leading people to Jesus. So of course, there will be times that people will have that feedback because they don't understand. You know what I mean? Hindi pa, hindi pa nandun yung heart. Pero, ito yung ano, you, you have no control over how people react. Okay, let me clarify that. You have no control over how people react, but you control how you respond to it. So if you're ministering to people in power and you're enjoying that recognition, guard your heart. Be careful. If you're ministering in power, if you're demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit, you're operating in the gifts, and you're enjoying the attention, you're enjoying the numbers coming into your ministry, you're enjoying all these cases here and there, self-confidence because of that, be very careful. Because that power is not yours. It's the power of God. It was just entrusted to you through His Holy Spirit. So you are a steward of that power. You will be accountable for that power. You will be accountable for that grace. Diba? In parable of the talents, parable of the minas, we will be called into account. So while, let's set, let's set the salvation issue acquired, uh, uh, let's, set, let's set it aside first, the salvation issue, you know, uh, the parable of the minas, parable of the talents, but whatever God has given to you and trusted you, he will ask you to give account for it. So that includes your power, the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's not our personal power na ikaw yung magaling. So just be really careful, guys. You know, be really careful that when you operate in the supernatural power of God, it's supposed to lead people to Jesus, not to your church, not to your ministry. You know, I get calls sometimes, bro, can you come here 
and then you pray over this person, and then you declare this. And I don't mind, because I do that. I don't mind. I go out, I pray for people. I have gone through very long distances just to minister to people, you know, and pray for them. But only if I have a leading. If I don't have a leading, I ask the person, why don't you pray for them? Bro, listen. What is the difference between your Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit in me? Uh, so there is no junior Holy Spirit. So you are there in that position to pray for that person. Why don't you pray for them? Why don't you declare healing upon them in Jesus' name? Why don't you pray against the evil in their life in Jesus' name? Why don't you share the gospel with them? The, power, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Why don't you share? Kasi ikaw yun nandyan. Hindi sa ayaw ko. Don't get me wrong. That's the whole point of the format of this ministry, the wisdom that God gave, uh, gave me at least for the format of this ministry. I'm not trying to get people here. We're trying to equip people here to bring them out. We're not trying to bring people to a big venue. We're trying to multiply this venue elsewhere in different pockets because that's where people grow. Fellowship groups, families, spiritual families. That's, that's a union. Eh? You know, we're not trying to get people to flock here. Of course, everyone's welcome to come here and worship with us. We love worshiping with everyone. We love praying for people. You know, there are a lot of brothers and sisters who come from far away, come here, and then, um, you know, we minister to them. Everyone's welcome. You're always welcome to visit the center, but I'm not trying to make this big here. We want to multiply. It's the same Holy Spirit in me. It's the same Holy Spirit in you. So our job here is to equip the saints so that you do this wherever you are, wherever you are. Because you will be able to touch people that I cannot. You guys know people that I will never, ever meet. And our paths will never intersect, but you are there. So you have the ability to impact them, not me. You can reach them. So why mo you going to me? Hindi sa ayo ko. Schedule with me, that's fine. You can, I'll minister to whoever, I'll pray for whoever. That's not a problem. I will never, hindi ko ipagdadamot po yun. Pero yung point ko lang is that your dependence shouldn't be on the leader or the pastor or, you know, just the ministry. It's on the Holy Spirit. It should be towards Jesus. And you have to be the one to demonstrate it. Now, I understand if you're still new, if you're not well-versed yet, you want to encourage people, then fine. You know, it's cool. Bring them over. Introduce them to your friends. Okay, yun. But I'm just saying, if you're at some point that you're walking in the power and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, you go. You go and pray for them. You go demonstrate the, uh, the power of God. Because the power of God doesn't just reside in a place. It's not about the four walls of this place. I believe this is holy ground, but the only reason why this is holy ground is because we're all here. Amen? So it's not about this specific place. When we all leave, tayo yung holy ground eh. Tayo yung temple of the Holy Spirit. Eh. So it's not about just the physical venue. It's about the people in it who love and honor God. Amen? You know, the Apostle Paul, it was so important for him to minister in power because he was imitating Christ. And Christ always ministered in power. Look what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 15 verse 19. It says, In mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that for, from Jerusalem and round about to Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. To fully preach the gospel, he operated in the power of the Holy Spirit. He operated in mighty signs and wonders. He displayed the power of God himself. So with this as the standard of fully preaching the gospel, what are we preaching? What are we preaching? In the power of signs and wonders. So again, some overshoot to the extent that all they ever teach about is power. Some overshoot and all they ever talk about is the anointing and the tongues and, and the miracles and the prophecy and the, alam mo na, mahilig mag mag ng salita. Like you have to talk about like this kasi ganito, you may anointing. No, that's not kahit ano pang King James ng boses mo. <laughs> hindi, hindi nadadaan. You know, God's not waiting. Uy, kumi King James, kumi King James. Sige, power, power, power. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to, ano, da, ano lang kasi, bakit ganun? Alalo. I remember before, I was in a mission trip in Mindanao. And then, um, 
um, I was uh, somewhere in Zamboanga. And then this lady said, I, I need, the brother, can, can you pray for me? I I've been hearing voices and pagtingin ko sa mirror, may nahihila daw siyang demonyo, nahihila daw siya, sinakal daw siya. And she showed me her fingerprints on her neck. And I was like, bro, can you please pray for me? Kasi ganito, ganyan, ganyan. So I was like, sige. It was a public place too. You know, it was out in the open. So I was like, dito ka muna sa bench. And I started praying. And she's just, bila na nag-manifest, umiiyak, and may pastor din kaming kasama dun sa likod. And then out of nowhere, I started hearing this guy. And this guy, he's, you know, he's, he speaks uh, English, Tagalog, Bisaya, you know, kasi he's from, he's from that area too. Biglang, biglang, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Parang kumaga na, so, ba't naging King James bigla? <laughs> so, natatakot ba yung demonyo pag naka King James yung boses mo? You know what I mean? Na, <laughs> You know, some of you may say, oh, yabang naman is your brother. It doesn't work. It's foolish. It's a dead work. Wala asa slang ng boses mo yun. You know, because the power is in the word of God, in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, not in your ability to speak. You know? So I just want to point that out. That don't overshoot na kailangan na lang pag power mode ka, nag-iiba ka na lang. Ano, sobrang cringe ka dun. You know, I'm sorry. God loves you for who you are. You could have an absolutely, you know, quiet personality but the moment you say, in Jesus' name, those demons will leave. Diba? Pwede kang tahimik, pwede kang ano. Kahit di ka magaling mag-English, kahit di ka magaling magsalita, pero pag sinabi mo, be healed in Jesus' name. It's not about you or how well you pronounce it. It's about the power of God in you by the power of the Spirit of God flowing through you that your faith responds to His grace. That person will be healed. Amen? So it's not about you. It's about Christ in you. Diba? But Christ in you has to manifest power. So hindi mo pwedeng pilitin yung power na yun. Hindi mo pwedeng ipush. It's all by grace through faith. Right? So we gotta be careful. Kasi the reason why I share that is some people have overshot and lahat na lang tungkol sa power. Lahat na lang tungkol sa gifts. Lahat na lang tungkol sa supernatural. That's not the, that's not the gospel. That's not the full gospel either. The gospel also talks about repentance. The gospel also talks about renewing your mind. The, the gospel also talks about holiness and purity. The gospel also talks about being at peace with one another. The gospel also talks about humility. So all these things come together. Hindi pa rin puro power lang. It's true that if you're not preaching in power, that's not the full gospel. Absolutely. Toto, it says here, you, we should be operating in mighty signs and wonders. But at the same time, if all you're doing is signs and wonders, you're just as lost as the other guy. So let's be careful. You know, it's not the only aspect of Christianity, but when we preach Christ, we preach Christ as a whole. Diba? By no means can you judge anyone by just one message or one teaching. There's too much to talk about in the Word of God that you can't fit it in just one session. Impossible. series, topics. There's so much. The Bible is such a big, you know, it's such a big book, and the depths of God are just endless. Diba? So. But at the same time, when we share, when we minister, when we preach, are we intentional about giving who God really is and not just the parts of Him that we like? Diba? Yun yung kailangan natin makita. Another point I want to make is, so we talk about power and ministering in power and all this. How does one activate this power? Some of you here, most of you here already know about it, but how does, some, how does someone, you know, how does it activate? How do, how do we use this power of God that's available through the Holy Spirit. So, again, please maintain your heart that the power of God, the supernatural power of God, signs and wonders and miracles, they're not there to impress people. They're not there to glorify you or your ministry or your church. Be very careful. A lot of people guard against criticism, but they don't guard against praise. It's equally poisonous. So, ingatan nyo rin yun, kahit na praise na ano. The purpose of the signs and wonders and power and miracles, all these things, it's for the edification of the saints and for the benefit of the body of Christ. The power of God is there so that you can manifest that power to someone in need. Kasi anak din ni God yun. And as a loving father, he wants to meet the needs of all his children. But the Lord, ha he wants to work through us. We are his means. Kaya nga, the, the reason why he put his spirit in us so that he could interact with his children through us. 
So the point of the power and the ministering of the supernatural power of God is for you to touch those lives with God's power. You are the instrument of that. Right? So how does the power activate? I mentioned earlier, like the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, it is activated by laying of hands. Okay? It starts off with that. So usually, do not put God in a box. There have been multiple examples of people experiencing the supernatural power of God, even without the laying of hands. I'm just saying that scripturally, usually, uh, there's a lot of scriptural support we'll go through that the power of God in you, through the Holy Spirit in you, is activated when they lay hands on you and you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's why it's such an important uh, aspect of our faith to understand that. But again, kahit na anong lay hands sa'yo, if it's not received by faith, wala din. Amen? So you, you, cannot, you cannot force the power of God upon someone when they reject it. You know, the Holy Spirit is the gentleman. He's not going to force himself. Delicado yun. Yung mga iba, hindi, pinilit ako na ganun. Hindi na si Holy Spirit yun. The Holy Spirit will not force you. The whole purpose of having a relationship with God, the whole value of having a relationship with God is hinged on the value that you chose to have that relationship with God. The whole value of love is that you choose to give love. Kung napilitan ka lang, that's not love, that's obligation. The whole value of loving God is that you freely choose on your own will, in your own, um, you know, sarili mo, that you choose to love God. The same thing with power. The value of the power is that you choose to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, that the power of God will flow upon you to bless other people. That's where the value lies. Right? So, again, you know, um, we do have a scriptural basis. I want to reinforce you guys, power, and obeying foundation natin, so we can explain it well to other people. How does the power of God inside us activate? Usually through the laying of hands. In Romans 1, verse 11, Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established. Bakit hindi na lang sa sulat? Bakit hindi na lang sa apron? Di ba may mga iba na heal through Paul's aprons? Di ba? Handkerchief, ganyan, pinadala ni Paul, pinadala ganyan. The, the, na hinawakan niya, so may na-heal, may na-deliver through the handkerchief and the apron. You know, some sides of Christianity still practice that um, as a, I don't know, ayoko na masyadong, ayoko na masidetrack dun sa usapan. But why did God use that method? He used it because Paul couldn't go there and he cared so much of the people in need that he made a way for that power to be transferred to them and they got healed. So that doesn't mean lahat na lang ng panyo, kailangan mo i-bless o kailangan mo ipuna sa pawis, lahat yun anointed na. If God leads you to do something like that, then you obey. But it doesn't mean lahat na lang ng panyo, kailangan mo ipahid. Okay? <laughs> diba? So anyway, Paul says here in Romans 1.11, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. So, imparting the spiritual gift requires His presence in person. Amen? So, yun yun eh. Iba rin yun. Iba talaga. Iba yung online. I get it. God can use that. I've seen many people healed online. I've seen people delivered online. That's, that's true. It's all there. You know, I believe so. It's all by grace through faith. But usually, again, through Scripture, there's wisdom why we follow Scripture. You know, um, it happens in the laying of hands. It happens during a physical, um, personal impartation from the minister to those who are attending. So it's usually done by the laying on of hands. You know, Paul himself received that anointing when he was laid hand, well, uh, when they laid hands on him. Acts 13, verses 2 and 3, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So, kita mo, before Barnabas and Saul, who became Paul, were sent out to minister, what did they do? They prayed, they fasted, they got a word from the Holy Spirit, and what did they do? They laid hands. They laid hands and then they sent them out. Yun yung point ng laying of hands to impart. It's like I have a fire inside of me from the Holy Spirit. I want to ignite that same fire in you. Diba? Parang series yan ng kotse. Diba? Kung naiintindi kami yung series ng kotse. May kuryente ka naman eh. Kailangan mo lang jumpstart. You know? Pero may kuryente ka na. May battery ka na. You know, it's not like um, you, you don't have something that I have. I'm just gonna jumpstart. Eh? That's the whole point 
of, of, of the laying on of hands. You know? So again, at the same time, reread this verse, they ministered to the Lord. First, they ministered to the Lord. That means they spent time with the Lord. When you minister to God, it's not about you. It's, not, it's just you honoring God for who he is and just being in awe of his presence. No agenda, no good works, just you and God. It's just pure intimacy with the Lord. You, they ministered to God. They were in that spiritual sense of ministering to God. And they fasted. Then what happened? The Holy Spirit spoke. When the Holy Spirit spoke, telling them to separate Barnabas and Saul for the work, for the ministry, who appointed them to ministry? The Holy Spirit. Hindi yung, oh, si Saul. Si pagmaglinis niyan. Bale three months na siya, pwede na siguro appoint yan. Hindi si Holy Spirit yan. Although that's how most churches work. Oh, yeah, sige na to. Oh, yeah, sige, pwede na siguro yan. Foolish. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Wait for the Holy Spirit to elevate the right people. How can you hear the Holy Spirit if you're not ministering to the Lord and you're not fasting? You're not spending time in prayer. Wait, and then the Lord will speak. He will say, He speaks. Ito mo, may, may verse si Holy Spirit, nagsasalita siya. Set apart Barnabas and Saul for the work. So after that, what did they do again? They fasted and prayed some more. Kasi bakit? Sobrang big deal ng laying of hands. It's such a big deal. This, was, this is just two verses here. These are just two verses. But this, I could talk about this for two hours, just this. It's so important, the laying on of hands. And I came from a church that it, it was a habit. Was you pray, lay hands, pray, lay hands. Lahat na lang, lay hands, lay hands, lay hands, lay hands. It's a habit. Tingin mo, lay hands. But they don't know that when you lay hands, there is a spiritual transaction that's happening. So there's a lot of bad stuff that happens. You may not see it, you may not think it, but there's a lot of bad stuff that happens. You know, when, when you take this for granted, it is very important to understand the whole point of laying hands. So you go here in 1 Timothy 5.22. Let's transfer here. 1 Timothy 5 verse 22. This is the value of the laying on of hands. 1 Timothy 5.22 in the New King James Version says, Do not lay hands on anyone hastily. Amen? Do not lay hands on anyone hastily. In, in the King James Version, it's lay hands on no man suddenly. Nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. Why does laying hands have anything to do with purity? Why? Why is it that here, the previous verse, balikan natin, yung Acts 13, they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit spoke, and then they fasted and prayed again. Ganyang kalaking decision to. That's why, do not lay hands on anyone hastily. Some translations talk about this. It's in the context of leadership. See, laying hands on people is so significant that it's synonymous to appointing leadership. In the NLT, it's do not appoint like leaders hastily. Parang ganun yung lumalabas. But how do you appoint a leader? You lay hands. So laying hands is not just a habit. I don't lay hands on everyone. Only as the Spirit leads. I don't lay hands on people. I don't want to have testimonies on that, but next time na lang. Um... Anyway, I'm point to lang, is that when you lay hands on people, there is a spiritual transaction. There is a spiritual impartation. I have I remember I think I got up with a mindset, old mindset before na. You lay hands, it's like a habit. And I was very new. I remember I was maybe two, three months into ministry. And then Shampre Lahat gusto ko ilay hands, the power of the Holy Spirit. And there was this one guy. Um, I'll never forget, you know, this guy came, he said, tawag sa akin, pastor. Sabi ko, ba't ako, pastor? Two months pa lang ako nagpiminister. Pastor, pag-pray mo ako kasi pinagdadasal ko, mamatay yung magulang ko. Sana mo, matay na yung ano, masaya na ako pag namatay na sila. As in, talagang grabe, like he wished for everyone to be dead. But he knew it was wrong. He knew it was wrong. You know, and I told him, I was like, bro, Kaya ang sama ng fruit ng buhay mo. Sorry, you have so much hate. Let go. You know, diba? I started ministering forgiveness and God's love and ganyan-ganyan. E ako naman, hot na hot. Siyempre, diba? mindset nung dating ano, lay hands ako. Sige, in the name of Jesus, ganyan-ganyan. You know, after that, tatlong araw ako nag-struggle suicide. I was like, what? What is this? Tawag ako sa mga, mga leader ko. Sabi ko, what's this? I can't. 
I know it's wrong. I'm not going to do it, but I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, lahat na lang, pag kunyari nasa mall ka, kita mo yan, tumalun ka dyan. Kita mo yung sa kosin, pasagasa ka. Ano ba, lahat na lang, kutsinyo, saksakay mo sarili mo. Like, it just wouldn't stop. Those voices wouldn't stop in my head. I knew they were wrong. I knew it was, but I, sabi ko, wala na to eh. Wala na to eh. Pero yun, sabi ko, ano nangyari? Kasi nung pag-pray ko, teka, 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 nalay hands mo ba? Oo, oh, kasi sabi ko, eh, yun yung problema mo eh. Lay hands ko na, lay hands, hindi ka nag-iisip. There's a spiritual transaction and I wasn't exactly renewed in my mind yet. I was two months into the ministry. So I'm not saying that the demons are stronger than the Holy Spirit. Okay? Don't get me wrong. First John 4, 4, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Diba? So it, the demons aren't winning in that. But my mind was not renewed. I did not have the proper revelation to protect myself. I didn't have the preparation to, 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 uh, no, to um, guard my heart or guard my mind. Another example. Na, ano, can, I, can I share with you? Okay lang. So Josh, um, Brother Josh joined us on a ministry trip somewhere. And then uh, Pastor Macho and I were there, Brother Dennard, Brother Josh. I'm let's minister in pairs. Yo, so there was two of us, prayer lines. And then the zeal and the, the heart of this young man for Jesus is so amazing. Yo, and I really honor him for that. Pero ng hat na hat siya, lahat ni lay hands niya. Yeah, go, it, was just, it was just great. Talagang on fire for Jesus. And I, no, I really honor him for that. I really do honor Brother Josh for that. May minasahe pa nga siya na isa talagang sa sobrang gusto niya mahil talagang minasahe niya na para mahil to in Jesus' name. And you know, God honors his heart. And that's, that's awesome. That's good. I remember when we went back into the car to rest a little bit, nagkatingin ng kami ni Josh. Sabi sa akin, Brother Josh, Bro, nakatayo lang naman tayo dun sa nagpray, but ito pakiramdam ko. Para siyang, para kang hazing na di mo maintindihan. And so, for him, that was a great learning experience. And magkasama pa kami. Like, I didn't leave him alone. We, we were together. I was ministering with him. The only reason why, you know, I was, I, I, I suggested we minister in pairs was because I want him to pray for people. I want him to exercise his gifts. I want him, and I'm there to agree in faith with him. And when he's praying for people, I'm praying for protection too. I'm declaring protection, not just for the person we're praying for, but for Josh as well. That's what prayer partners do. That's what teams do. When you're, pag ako nasa harap, I'm praying, these guys are praying for me as I'm ministering. That's how we work together in prayer in the supernatural. That's yun yun eh. So I can't just teach that as a concept. I wanted him to learn firsthand. Pero gulat ako yung after, sabi niya, bro, grabe yung pakiramdam. The fatigue in his, sabi niya, but ganun. We were just standing there praying for people. This is what happened. So oh, there's a spiritual battle. It wears you down because every time you lay hands on people, there's a spiritual transaction. So again, I am not undermining the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Holy Spirit is the most powerful f- power ever because He is God. But at the same time, you need wisdom to use that. Just because you have the strongest gun in the world or the sharpest sword doesn't mean you know how to use it. Amen? So we need wisdom also. So again, laying hands has something to do with purity also. So be careful. How do you impart gifts? You lay hands. How do you appoint leadership? You lay hands. There's a spiritual transaction, but it works both ways. So before you lay hands, pray about it very, very well. Okay? The baptism of the Holy Spirit, also laying of hands. So, I just got to speak. I don't know. You know, some of you may think I may sound really critical, but the only reason, I, I never speak against people or labels or names. I will speak against the lie. I will speak against the bad practice, but I will stand on scripture, but I will not condemn people. Ah, si pastor ganito, ah, si bishop ganyan. I, I don't want to name names because God loves every one of them and I don't want to judge according to the flesh, but I have no problem attacking the lie that is being peddled. So it's not about brands, it's not about names, it's not about, hindi yun eh. Yung lie yung ayoko. So I will speak against that, okay? You know, um, walang particular na taong pinag-uusapan dito. There's, it's not a specific person or a specific uh, church or ministry, but again, uh, bato-bato sa langit kasi may tatamaan dito. <laughs> <laughs> yung mga conference or yung mga event na come here and will lay hands on you and activate your gifts or impart whatever they have. I think that's one of the f- most foolish and dangerous things you can do. I'm sorry, okay? 
Um, people can disagree. People can call me mayabang. People, you can say whatever you want. This is my conviction. I understand that it's a good thing that we want the body to, you know, to um, to walk in power. I, I understand that it's a good thing that we want every Christian in the world to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit and operate in signs and wonders. That's great. That's wonderful. I agree with you. Okay. I believe every Christian should walk in power. Absolutely. But at the same time, I also believe that the power comes with responsibility. So, I activate ako ng gift sa'yo. I-impart ko sa'yo, gift ko. Lalay hands kita. Pero yung heart mo kay God, hindi okay. That makes me part of your fault. That makes me part of that problem. That you're gonna go around, passing around, hurting people with a lot of bad stuff. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, rem I was reminded of this verse in Luke 12, uh, verse 48. In the second half of it, it says, for everyone to whom much is given, for him much will be required. To whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. Guys, this power, the signs and wonders, these gifts, these all things, yes, absolutely go desire it. But at the same time, it's, it's a responsibility. Healing, deliverance, yes, believer's authority, absolutely. Every believer can do that. By all means, go pray for people. Hindi, hindi ako nagdadamot sa power and gift and kaya. But yung akin lang, I would do more harm to this person by laying my hands and giving them a false sense of maturity and go, minister. Hindi. I would much rather minister truth. I would much rather share the love and grace of God and build a strong foundation for this person. Why? Because you will discover power on your own if you spend time in the Word. If you spend time in the gospel, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. If you spend time in the word of God, if you spend time in intimacy with the Holy Spirit, power will manifest. Impossible hindi. But you create an event, a conference, that's okay, puro lay hands lang, puro impartation. Gusto ko yung gift niya, astig yung gift niya, punta ako dun. Oo nga, pero nagrepent ka ba? May pakialam ka ba kay Jesus? Importante ba sa'yo Bible o gusto mo lang gift? Ang dami ko na na-encounter na... Puro power, puro ganyan. And they do have power. It works. They can heal people. They can cast out demons. But they're not leading people to Jesus. They're leading people to their group. They're leading people to, dito ka sa amin, may power dito. O dito ka dito. Dito sa amin, may healing. Yan, mga yan, wala yan. Halika, tignan mo kung sino nandyan. Pahabain natin yung mga paa. <laughs> so, I said, I talked about this last Saturday. Hey, I'm not mocking the miracle. You know why? Because my own right leg grew out. It's on camera. I'm not going to show the video, but my wife has it. There's no way. Pare, sa laki kunto, di mo mahihila pa ako. Okay? Di mo magagawa. But my leg grew out. And turns out the reason why I had back pain before was because my right leg was a few inches shorter. It did. It grew out. Gulat yung wife ko. And I didn't have back pain ever since. So yes, it's a miracle. Yes, there are people with uneven uh, legs. But that doesn't mean na lahat na lang pagpe-pray mo humaba yung paa. Okay? That doesn't mean lahat na lang pagpe-pray mo humaba yung kamay. That doesn't mean lahat na lang pagpe-pray mo mawala yung wrinkles. There's a real miracle that's that I, I'm not questioning the Holy Spirit. Nothing in Scripture, I'm not, the basa, God cares about what you care about. So absolutely, you want, you can pray for wrinkles. Pray for one another's wrinkles. That's fine. That, that's okay. Pero, 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 kung yan lang yung ministry mo, hindi kay God yan. Amen? Kung yan lang yung ginagawa mo, if it's all about just the feeling great and the being slain, and ganito, asan si Jesus? Where is it? Ginawa mo drugs. Sige, ako naman. Bagsak. O next, bro, bagsak. Nagsin ako. Pasukain mo ako. <laughs> Kasi, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You know, I know it sounds, it sounds mayabang. But really, you know what? No, you know why I, you know why I speak? You know why I'm so annoyed? Because I see these people and they're desperate for freedom. And people are not giving it. Doon ako nagagalit. Hindi sa ministry, hindi sa tao mismo. But I hate that lie. Because there are people who are desperate for freedom. And they really want to experience the loving hand of God. And they can't. Kasi kailangan every week punta ako dito at paglalaroon ako para sumuka sa basuran. That's terrible. That's not the work of Jesus. It's not. You're actually empowering demons more. Diba? Prophetic, prophetic gift ka. Every, di ako maka-order ng makdo na hindi sinasabi sa akin ng prophet. That's witchcraft. That's control. Lahat na ng dreams ko na akong interpret. That's bondage. 
Keep going every day. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Ano ibig sabihin yan? You're shrouded in mystery. God has revealed the mystery. God is a God who reveals. So if you are left confused, that's not God. He's not the author of confusion. See, you see what I mean? There's so many bad practices here. People think I'm just bitter or angry. I don't care about bahala sila. They will answer to God. But ako, I will stand against that lie. I will have none of that in our ministry here. Because I've seen how that hurts people. Both the one being prayed for and the one praying. The one praying has a false sense of security that, oh, I'm so mature and I'm so powerful. Because when I pray, there's manifestation. It's bad for the be- person being prayed for. Why? Because they think they're receiving freedom, but they're not. Freedom comes in truth. When you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Right? So all these signs, the wonders, the gifts, the deliverance, the healing, it's all a responsibility. You're not to, you are not to play with the power of God. Would you hand a loaded gun to a child? Exactly. Ito pa kaya power of God. Walang sinabi yung mga high caliber baril so yes, it could be used for good. It could also be used for bad. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. There are entire denominations that have declared that miracles have ceased. There's no more power because there are other denominations and other ministries that have so focused on all the power that they abused it. Naging kulto. There is also fake power. There's demonic power. There's principalities, di ba? So again, guys, the power of God, it's a responsibility. You know, you cannot hand a loaded gun to just whoever. Laying hands is based on trust. It's based on relationship. It's based on before you lay hands and impart anything to people, pray. Fast and pray. Minister to the Lord. When He speaks, that's when you lay hands and impart. Amen? Kasi hindi kasalanan ni God yan. Sabihin ng iba, eh, ba't binigay ni God yung power sa kanya? Hindi eh. Romans 11.29. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. So just because God gave you a gift, remember, it becomes your gift. You have to use it. You have to practice it. You have to steward it. Diba? So parang ganito yan. Say if I gave you a car. Here are the keys. Ito yung, ito yung ORCR. Ito yung ganyan. Kompleto na yan. Bahala ka na dyan. Akin yung car na yan, but you take care of it. Ikaw na bahala. Wherever you go, whatever you do, ikaw magpagas, ikaw yung magpaayos ng gulong, whatever. Okay. So if I gave that to you, and then you rammed another car, kasama ko ba yun? No. Who's driving? That's the point. The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Pero kung sasagasaan mo yung ibang tao, that's not God's fault. Because He gave you that gift, it's up to you to steward that gift. So you got to be careful with your gifts. Gifts are not a gauge of spiritual maturity. Amen? Because gifts are given. You know, the word gifts here in, in 1 Corinthians, it's the, word, the Greek word for that is charisma. Root word, charis. Charis is grace. It's a grace gift. So just because you're spiritually gifted, it doesn't mean na magaling ka. It means that God wanted to use you to be a blessing to someone there. So it's not about how good you are or how awesome you are. It's about how good He is and he cares more about the need of that person. God will not wait for you to be perfect before he can use you. Okay? What's more important is that he meets the need of his son or daughter. Judas was out healing the sick, casting out demons, and raising the dead. You know that? Luke 9, Luke 10. And He was right there. He was with the 12. Lord, the demons obey us. Kasama siya dun. Go, heal the sick, preach the kingdom, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Kasama si Judas dun. He was there. And that was a gift. He was operating in the, the delegated power of God. Pero ano nangyari? Diba? So hindi porque may gift, may ganito, may ganyan. Let's be careful. Okay? Others overshoot because they abuse. It's very common. You can get drunk from power. So just be very, very careful. Amen? Be very careful. Power... Yes, desire it. Yes, pursue it. Yes, you should understand it. Yes, operate and demonstrate it. Absolutely. But also remember, it's a big responsibility. You carry the name of Jesus. Amen? You know, let's go to, I'm almost done, but let's go to 1 Timothy 4, verses 12 and 14. It says here, this is Paul writing to Timothy. He said, let no one despise your youth, but be an example 
to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. These things are all enumerated. And dami kasi nagko-quote ng verse 14 lang eh. Favorite to ng mga conference eh. Do not neglect the gift that is in you which is given to you by the prophecy with the laying on of hands or the eldership or the presbytery. Diba? Yan yung ano yan eh. Diba? Yan yung, yan yung mga favorite. Ah, so lay hands na yan. Woo! Diba? Fire, fire. Diba? I mean, okay lang yan. No, that's good. That's good if you have a leading. But if you're doing it just for fun. Man, you can't preach verse 14 without these other verses. He said, let no one despise your youth. First is character. Be an example in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come. Give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Doctrine means truth. Then, don't neglect your spiritual gift. Amen? So it's not just all about your gift. Ah, gifted ako, ganito, ganyan. Alam mo, kung hindi si Jesus bit-bit mo, wala akong pakialam sa gifting mo. Not impressed. I'm sorry. I'm more, I, I would be impressed with someone who really loves with the love of Jesus. Kahit hindi nag-ooperate sa power. Kahit sa yung puro power ka nga, ikaw naman yung inaangat mo. Guys, I'm sharing this because power is a natural thing. That when you worship God, when you, when you grow in the word and in truth, you will manifest power. It's who God is. It's His nature. Christ inside you will be able to move freely and outwardly, di ba? Sa buhay mo. So, natural yung power. Ang point nitong series na to is I want to impart to you guys wisdom. What to look out for. Because I, I've lost friends from this. Okay? I, I've, I, my, I've been heartbroken about a lot of people that I really cared about and got ruined by this. Na may word na, may ganun na. It's heartbreaking to witness people, you know, get toyed around with the enemy just because they didn't guard their heart. That's why my heart is just sobrang importante sa akin to. I don't want to see anyone here fall. I don't want to see anyone here get corrupted by power. Now you may start off well, but the ending is not good. Diba sabi nga ni Paul, he wants to finish the race. You gotta finish the race. The race of life, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So you gotta finish it. Who cares if you're the fastest guy five minutes in? So what? Brother Ten knows that. Andami na natin kasama. May power, may power ganito. Nasaan na? Same plan. Kaninong pangalan nyo nasira? Kay Jesus. For me, that, that breaks my heart. So it's not personal. Do I love those, per, those people? So, yes, I still love them. Do, do I have anything bitter against them? No, I don't. God loves them. I pray for them. I wish that they would get restored and that they would repent and see all this and, and, and just come back to God's arms. Absolutely. Mahal natin sila. Pero yung lie na ginagawa nila, I will not stop preaching against that. Amen? So yung akin lang, I want to, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, people can feel free to disagree with me. You know, nobody's forced to listen or believe in me. But at least to those within the ministry, those who, who submit to the authority of the ministry or do, or, 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 a touring sa akin leader, I will, I will love you and, you know, speak this in love upon you. I don't want to see anyone fall. Especially pag duma, dumadalo yung power. Kasi it's a, such a big responsibility. Remember, power is for the purpose of witnessing and leading others into an encounter with Jesus. You know? Your prayers, when they work, it doesn't mean that you're automatically mature and super strong. It's not about that. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the grace of God. Absolutely all by grace. And I will end with this verse. It says here in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Please don't ever forget this, okay? Don't ever forget this verse. Sobrang basic nito. To each one is given the, manifest, the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Hindi lang para sa good niya at your expense. Hindi lang para sa good mo at his expense. You know, check your heart. Yes, desire the power. It's part of our identity, but it's also part of our responsibility. You know? You know, guys, I don't know how many of you were there, but I think it was two or three years ago, um, fellowships at QC. You guys remember that? The, the, the closed-door fellowship because there was lockdown. 
and everything. And, you know, there was someone who came over and then asked to be prayed over. And then the moment, um, the moment we started praying, began to manifest. Manifest. And then some of our sisters, of course, they were concerned. So they started getting garbage cans and tissue. And again, some people stopped. And I just look at this, this woman. When I command that evil spirit, I said, I forbid you from manifesting. You don't deserve attention. This place belongs to the Holy Spirit. And I declare freedom upon her in Jesus' name. Tigil siya. Hindi na siya sumuka, hindi siya nagmanifest, naging okay yung mukha niya. She was set free and not at the expense of her dignity. Amen? It was for the common good. Kasi pwede ko siyang pasukain dun eh. Tapos, oh, Jesus' name, out. O sige, ano pa, laban ka pa, demonyo. You can make a show out of it. Pwede mo pa interviewin yung demonyo kung gusto mo talaga. I don't recommend that. That's unbiblical. But, you know, some people do. I disagree with that completely. I don't, I don't need to know anything that demons know. I have the Holy Spirit who knows all things. We have the mind of Christ. So I don't need information from demons. Okay? So, ang point ko lang is that this woman, she's been through so much already. I honor her dignity. Hindi ko kailangan pasukain yan para lang maset free siya. Kailangan lang mabigay si Jesus. So I'm not saying that all manifestations are wrong. The people still manifest. I'll deal with it there. But I will not push a manifestation out of her and I will not make a show out of a manifestation of anyone. Why? Because it's supposed to be for the common good. Remember, when the Lord's blessings, He adds no sorrow with it. God cares about your dignity. God cares about your heart. God cares about your life. He cares about everything about you. He loves you so much. So again, I, really, I hope this... Okay, okay lang ba? Okay ba? May natutunan naman tayo. You know, I really hope... You know, you, again, pray about this. Then next time, yung more. <laughs> Pero pray about this. Again, I'm not claiming to possess all the truth. In, diba? Na ako, but pray about it. Whatever I'm sharing here has been on my heart for the past years of ministering. And I'm, I'm just trying to impart wisdom. You can feel free to disagree with me. You can feel free to, ayaw ko to, ganito, tuloy mo practice. Bahala ka. It's between you and God. But just remember, you will be accountable for what you're doing. And so will I. Okay? So I would really be listening to the Holy Spirit rather than just pushing our own agenda. Question your practices. Why do you do what you do? Bakit? Natutunan ko lang ba ito kay pastor? Kasi sa leader namin, ganyan. Ah, sa ministry namin, ganito. I don't care what you do in your ministry. What the scripture say? As amin kasi, inuutusan namin yung angel. Pag ganito, ganyan. Anong scripture mo para dun? Si Jesus nga, hindi inutusan yung angel. Sabi ni Jesus, don't you know that I can pray to the Father and the Father will send legions of angels? Jesus himself prayed to the Father. So, you know, see, you see, stuff like that. I, I know it's not a big deal. We shouldn't fight. We're not supposed to fight. Though. There's no fighting over it. I'm just saying, if you really care about Jesus, you would care about the Word. You would care about being in truth. You really care about the Lord. You would care about standing in His Word and listening to His Holy Spirit. Guys, unfair yung kalaban. Okay? The enemy hits below the belt. The enemy does not play fair. So please, guard yourselves. Supernatural power of God. You operate in the supernatural power of God. You are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. There will be opposition. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not glorifying the enemy. But it's foolish to ignore that. Please be careful. Please be careful. Please guard your heart. Please be rooted and founded in the word. Please have an accountability system where you can speak out and you can welcome correction and humility. Amen? Just be careful, guys, because inside you is a treasure and there's a thief trying to steal that. So go and be a blessing to everyone around you. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this message. Thank you for this new series, Lord, that you have given me this word to share to my dear brothers and sisters. I pray, Lord, that the word tonight would be quickened to their hearts, that they would see things from your perspective, Lord. I, I pray that they would question what I have to say and go to Scripture itself. It's not about me. I, I don't expect anyone here to take it at face value. I pray that everyone here would go back to the verses and meditate it on their own and let the Holy Spirit quicken the same truth to them. Father, between them and you, that you would equip them, you would teach them, you would arm them. It's your power, Lord. It's your power, it's your ministry, it's your gospel. We are here to just be channels of your love and grace to everyone around us. Father, I just pray right now that everyone here 
would just, you know, grow in the knowledge and revelation of who you are. I pray that the hearts of everyone here would be open to you, Lord, that they would hear your voice more clearly and, and just, you know, they would receive your word readily in the good soil of their hearts and it would bear much fruit. I know that everyone here, Lord, has a great divine purpose, something special. Lord, you have good works prepared for each and every one of us. Even before the beginning of our lives, even before we were conceived, even before the earth began, you have set apart these good things for us to do. I pray, Lord, that you would teach us, guide us, and equip us that we may fulfill those plans that you have set before us. Because it's all about you, Lord. It's your ministry. We want to operate in your love and your grace for the common good. There's no other name that we wish to exalt but the name of Jesus. No other ministry but the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's it. Father, it's not about bringing people to this church, that church. It's bringing people to your arms. So, Father, again, I thank you for everyone that's here. I thank you for all the humble hearts um, that are here. I just speak blessing, life, peace, and wisdom upon them, Lord. And I pray that everyone here would just grow in, in, in that intimacy, Lord, with you. That they would hear your voice more clearly in all aspects. Thank you for this. It's up to you. Amen. Thank you, guys.